so powerful is because of the Big Bang, you know. The Big Bang, which is supposedly where we all came from, was a sound, you know. And that, and sound, you know, is a vibration and I mean that makes sense to me that that might be why uttering sounds and making music is uh, so powerful. Uh, a lot of our human qualities, you know, that are good and bad, come from real primal instincts, you know. Um, some, some, we talk about the, like the negativity reflex, which is just kind of built into us. It's a lot safer to be negative about something, uh, because the consequences, if you're wrong, can be uh, quite steep in some settings. So, you know, like, that's like built into us, uh, just as humans. Uh, so there's probably a music or a sound uh, thing that's kind of built into us too. I saw a documentary on um, uh, an island that was essentially a breeding ground for albatross and one of the experiments they did was to play on a, a small uh, tape player a very uh, a rhythmic song, uh, not song, a very rhythmic uh, a uh, piece of music that was basically drums and bass guitar and then you could see the albatross, particularly the male ones, getting up on their legs and st spreading their wings and sort of dancing uh, uh, as you would expect perhaps a human to dance and uh, the, uh, the filmmaker that did that basically was trying to show that they're not that far off uh, uh, the <laughs> the evolutionary scale from us as we think they may be, they also enjoy music. I think it is because music um, activates a different part of the brain um, and I think it's uh, more, it, it can be more visceral, a visceral reaction, you know, and I think rather than just conversing with someone, if you put something into music, it moves you in a way that just words alone don't. Yeah, I think, you know, Sufi mystics believe that, they believe quite properly that everything is a vibration. And the fact that vibrations can be organized in a way that evokes an emotional response, that's really a mystery. And it's really fascinating. You know, why, why do these vibrations... Why does that evoke something in people? Well, we don't know. So I think the fact that music is familiar to us and yet it's mysterious, that's, that's one of the great things about it. Music is really vibration, right? And I think we live in a vibratory universe. I think that we are vibration and I think that vibration hits our vibrations in ways that are, um, you know, really lovely and I think that uh, rhythm is, you know, is, is deep in our DNA and our, in our psyches and maybe even our soul. I think we've been listening to rhythm for, you know, centuries and, uh, and that rhythm is kind of mimics our heartbeats, I think, and, and the rhythm of life. And so I think, you know, the, the vibratory, the rhythmic, you know, um, aspects of music are just something that kind of almost like plays us as an instrument and, uh, and, and when our instrument is, is in tune with the music then I think it's just a really satisfying you know, experience. And it doesn't always need to be harmonious, sometimes there's, there's dissonance in harmony as well and, and it makes life interesting and it makes us uh, curious as to uh, what the next, uh, you know, the next question and next resolution of that question will be. This may be just Western music, I'm not sure, but I've never met a person that when you play a major chord and you play a minor chord and you say, what does it sound like to you? What's the difference? I've never met someone who doesn't associate the minor with, you know, dark, ominous, sad, and associate the major with more happy and bright and that's mysterious to me because why would two notes, you know, make someone feel an emotion like that? 
When I taught a course that I used to teach at Dartmouth about uh, the science and engineering of music, I used to play two very distinctive tracks and I did that all five years that I taught that course and I got very very predictable results. And the first one that I would play was a piece by uh, Hector Villalobos called Brachia uh, Bacchianas Brasileira number no. 5. At the end of uh, the, the little excerpt that I would play, the students would uh, uh, give me a lot of uh, um, um, descriptive uh, uh, short phrases like, uh, this is sad, or this is uh, uh, putting you in a very quiet mood, or uh, sometimes I would get them to think about things like nostalgic mood. Like, uh, but never would they say something like happy, I want to jump around and dance and I, you know, it, it makes you excited and all that. So clearly there is a range of moods that this elicits and it does that very predictably. Okay, so then uh, I would play something that was, I think, deliberately made to be playful and uh, 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 exciting. And this would be the, the following piece. <laughs> And so this is clearly a very playful uh, piece. It is definitely intended to elicit some fun uh, in the listener and that would always emerge. So then I would get the students to understand that this sort of associations that we make between certain types of rhythms, melodies, sounds uh, and the mood that it uh, elicits is very predictable. It is predictable within a culture and it also transpires pretty well between cultures although with some limits because of you know the nature of expectations in the various cultures when it comes to music and things like that. But even so, uh, that piece for example it's a pretty safe bet that it will make people laugh rather than cry in most cultures. Okay, so that's that's the power of music. You could you could play a couple chords, maybe three chords in a certain sequence, and and, and it totally, you know, has a dark and moody feel. Or conversely, like you could play something that has like a big, you know, we're marching up the mountain, da da da, you know, type of feel to it. For me, I think music is powerful because it helps us express. Um, emotions that we can't put words to. It, if you're going through something and you hear a song on the radio that speaks to exactly what it is that you're, um, that you're feeling, it can put, you know, it, um, it can give expression to what you're feeling. For me in my whole life, like whenever I've been depressed or kind of down or not really searching for peace or whatever, I mean, I've always been drawn to music my whole life and I was always singing and singing and just listening music always like uplifts me and gets me into like a better state of mind. So it's very powerful and the lyrics are very powerful too. When there are a lot of problems in life, you can feel like not doing anything. But somehow, if you don't feel like doing anything, anything and nothing is appealing. Music is always appealing. Music will always get you to sort of perk up a little bit and it'll get you to um, 
And, and for me, it was like, okay, but I feel like practicing. Like, I want to learn new tunes. I want to do that. I may not feel up to doing almost anything else, but I always want to do music. And I think that for people, even if you're not a musician, I mean, for me, I just gravitated toward it. And um, I think it's true for almost everybody that music will always take your mind off of what's going on. Or, or it'll help you deal with what's going on. If you hear a song that really relates, you know from the instant you hear that song that somebody else out there has the problems that you have or somebody else understands emotionally what you're going through. Because music just has this, you know, it covers emotional, it covers um, um, intellectual, it, it sort of hits every single level. And the way you learn music also is, is so fascinating because you're calling on, you, you don't, kind of don't learn music in a linear fashion. You, you grab this piece of information, you grab that, you grab that, this informs that. It's almost like, um, yeah, I mean, I could, you, you could think of it very spiritually, but it's, it's very much, it's like the, the constellations. It's like, it all sort of, you notice different parts of it. It's such a, it's such a universe. It's it's a huge universe of sound, and you could you fit yourself into it at at different times in in, in different parts of like the constellation of music. I think it's really 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 powerful. I think it's powerful because simply, it's just a bunch of vibrations, a bunch of rhythm patterns, a bunch of uh, frequencies. So if you put two frequencies together, you can have something happy. Or if you put two frequencies together, you can have a different key which would make you sad. Or um, it's, it's kind of hard to go out, to go through life without music, for me. Um, imagine a party with no music in the background. Imagine going roller skating at a roller rink and there's no music. Imagine going to have a massage and they're playing inappropriate music. Let's say they played disco music during your massage. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be right. So there's relaxing music and there's happy music, and there's sad music, there's dance music, there's religious music, and it's powerful because we need it. And it's, it's a natural thing if, there's music in everything, you know, like your heartbeat, or the way you walk, or, turning a page in a book, or opening a door, phones ringing, all of that has to do with music. So it's powerful because it's everywhere. You know, when I think about why music is powerful, it's, it's kind of, there's a mystery there because it seems so powerful for so many different people all over the world, people that don't like each other, you know, um, like music. Uh, you know, I always thought it would be a great idea to take leaders of countries and make them play music together, just to see what that would be. But uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> but